got all these machined up ready. And now what we've got to do is clean the ends up. And then uh, so I'll clean one end up, I've got four of them to do. And then I'll cut them into 35mm length. I want six of these. And that's what the plan's going to be anyway. Uh, Touch up, zero the X. Change to a sixteen mil carbide and uh, I've also figured out that. Uh, getting a bit of noise from the motor on the machine, the spindle motor, so it's Saturday morning now, so I'm going to have a couple of hours in the workshop because it's too wet outside to do anything else at the minute, I've got some gardening to do believe it or not, so what my plan is to have a couple of hours in here, then this afternoon Go and get some stuff done in the garden, and hopefully at some point on Sunday, I'm going to whip the motor off the machine again, so I can get the bearings out and uh, get the numbers off them and order a new set of bearings for the motor. And then when that's done, this machine then will have had every bearing changed. I think we're about there now, we'll take ten, ten out. Yeah, when I've done the motor bearings, that'll be, every bearing in this head will have been changed then. And it's got new buttons in the, on the uh, very polish shaft. And a new drive belt. We'll give that a five bar climb cut on the way back. That should be Bob your uncle Fanny's your aunt. So, oh yeah, Al likes that. A square on all corners. So I'm going to get the rest of these done. Uh, let's say I've just got one end to do on each one. These are those horrible bloody chips again, the ones you've got to be careful of. Uh, and then when I've got these ends cleaned up I've cut them into just over 35 mil long pieces and then we're gonna have to think about drilling two holes in one you know two holes in from the bottom that are gonna bolt it to the plate you know it's gonna sit like that well that's what it's gonna look like you see that there that's gonna be sort of one of the hinges, so two bolts will go through the bottom to pull it onto the plate and my rather crude uh, drawing is where the uh, dowel pin is going to go to make the hinge so I'll carry on with these and then uh, bring you back in a bit right, slight change of plan I really ought to clean the bottom side of these up before I clean the ends up because we've got a bit of a thing there. So, we'll take a 10 power pass on it to start with and see what that does. Get all this crap off of here. I thought fly cutting would be a little bit uh, 
less tool pressure than anything else. You may have also noticed the swivel part of my vice has disappeared. It's because when I did those big plates, I measured them, I've got about 8 to 10 hundredths of a millimetre difference at each end, and I couldn't understand why. You remember, I ground the top of this vice. Uh, so I took the swivel base off, put the vice back on. Oh, sorry, before I did that, I put some parallels in it, and I went across it with the dial indicator. And I could see I got, uh, I was out, there was something not quite right. So I took the swivel base off, just bolted the vice down itself. Did the same test again with the, uh, uh, with the parallels in the jaws. Run the dial indicator across, absolutely smack on. So, obviously that, uh, that swivel base needs a, some attention on the grinder. Clean these faces up on both sides. Well, one side's already done actually. We'll take a measurement of how thick it is, but I think I want to get them to about 10 mil. Tool needs a bit of a sharpen because that's a bit of a rough finish. Oh, the good cup of tea. Well, I think what I'll do, I will run them all at that same setting, one after the other, till I've got all the scale off. Then I'll uh, give that tool some attention. I run them all at the same setting as that one. It's just up in the airline now. And then when I get all the scale off, then I'll. I'll uh, like I say, I'll give the old uh, <coughs> I'll give the tool tip some attention and then hopefully we'll get a bit better finish than that. Deeper. Right, I'll carry on with this and then uh, we'll see where we get to. So I've got them, uh, I've got them all machined on one side, uh, and now I need to take 12 thou off them. 12 thou off these will then leave us. Uh, Come on, Al, what's that leave us? That leaves us 10.75 millimetre thick, which will, uh, I'm going to aim for 10.5 mil finished thickness. Uh, so that'll leave us about, that'll leave me 0.5, uh, sorry, 0.25 of a mil to play with. Better if I put 12 thou on it. Won't it? That will leave me. Uh, 0.25 of a mil to play with on the grinder, and for our American friends, uh, 0.25 of a mil, uh, it's about 9,000, which is not, not too bad. I haven't touched the uh, cutter by the way, it's still, well, it seems to be going well enough I think for what this is, and it's going to go on the grinder anyway, because I want to get the hinges, 
as good as I can accuracy wise because I'm, my train of thought is the better the hinges are the more accurate it all is the less sort of strain will be on them uh, you know so they fit better and when you open the plates up and down on the angle plate they'll be uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for smoother I suppose they won't bind on the hinges, that's what I'm after. So, where do we get that? Of course, is a completely different matter. I'm just filing the burrs off this other one if you're wondering what the noise in the background is. So what I'm doing is I'm just going round them with a stone just before I put them on there to do this finished cut or this finished pass and then uh, off we go so that's that one finished so when I get them all done I'll just square the ends up like I started to do at the beginning of the video <laughs> I suppose what we've got to do now is check and see whereabouts we're at, isn't it? So, we'll just check this one. If this is all... If it's within a few hundredths of a millimetre, that's... That's going to be alright. So I'm looking for 10.75. Can you see that on there? Yeah, a bit so you can see it. Focus up there for a second. So yeah, we're getting uh, 10.73. So that's within two hundredths of a millimetre, which is uh, less than a thou. So you know, I was happy with that. <sighs> Take that one out. So I'm going to. Uh, this is what I was saying. I have filed all the main burrs off. This is a stone I've ground on the on the grinder. So if you think I might be being a little bit pedantic, it's it's mainly because the better I get these on here, it's going to be so much quicker and easier to grind them. I know when they come off my grinder, even though it's an old machine they will be uh, pretty much on the money. Yeah, it's a, it's a really old grinder, but God, she's accurate. I'll pop that onto there. And as Tommy Lipton always says, Rinse and repeat, I think, is the order of the day. A bit of love juice. And then... Run a little bit slower on this pass, just to make sure we're all right. Ten point seven three at that end. Ten point seven three at that end. So that's all happy. Right, I'll get a bit more done and then uh, bring you back in a bit. Let me see through the smoke. <laughs> right, I've got my hinges cut. Oh, well, there's two. I can't cut them down any shorter. I can't hold them in the bandsaw. So. I thought this would be an idea to uh, try this out, this uh, slitting saw arbor, because I've not used it since I made it, so we'll give it a whirl, shall we? we I can 
Ele sai, a gente sai, o clube é ovo. So long, isn't it? I can see I'm going to make another one, a shorter one, as well. Because this will have its uses, won't it? Two revs, so it's not a case of I'm going too fast, is it? Tell you what, it's left a smooth finish. Right, I'll get the other one done. going a lot better if you go all the way in and as close to the main shaft as you can. But I tell you, it's as smooth as hell. Right, onwards. So we've got uh, 
The last real bit we've got to do on these milling wise is they all want to be the same height. So I've just done that one. So I'm going to leave everything set as it is and just quickly run over the next run over the remaining ones. Yeah. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go down <coughs> one side and back up the other because it tends not to leave such a burr then <coughs> as if you uh, do it all in one go like. So there'll be hardly any burr on that side now. And then if we do pretty much the same on this side. I could push it a bit harder but I don't want it to move the block in the vice if you know what I mean, push it sideways. I've got four more left to do after that one. chips away and we'll just uh, yeah if you look I've got no burr that side and no burr that side so I'm looking for 35.3 can you see that on the screen I can bring it up here can't we Oops. so 35.28 somewhere between 35.25 and 35.3 I'm happy 35.25 so that's that one done so, what my plan is, is to get these done and then get them on the surface grinder and get them all ground so they're the same height and the same width and everything. And then, uh, get in here, we're going to uh, put a, an 8mm hole drilled and reamed in the middle there somewhere like that. And then we're going to drill an M, I think they're M6, I'm not sure, up in here like that so these can be bolted down and when they're all done uh, I'm going to put a radius on the top like that with the uh, with the rotary table but that will be one of the last bits I do so for the time being all I'm sort of concentrating on is I just want to get these done get them ground up so they're all the same and then hopefully when I come to ream them uh, all the reamed holes will be as identical as I can get them and then hopefully there'll be no it'll cut down the risk of any binding on the hinges is my uh, plan anyway so I'll carry on and get these done and then uh, I'm not sure how much video I've taken actually I'm getting a bit bloody cold to be honest. I ain't got my heater on. But I would like to get these ground today as well, so we'll see how we get on. Right, we're about ready to go. Well, I have a slightly worried. I switched all this lot on and something went with a mighty bang. And I can't seem to find what it is. I've turned everything back on again and everything appears to be working. So, I'm just 
clean this top edge off best we can. got one block ever so slightly higher than the other one and that'll be just a couple of tenths because there's nothing in it right I'm going to put on uh, a thou and see where that gets us Not bothering with the water. Or even at the foul, it's not catching anything, is it? Right. I could actually have some backlash in the uh, Try that and see what that does. I've only got to grind three sides flat because obviously one side's going to have a radius on it, isn't it? Or one end, should I say. And I think I've allowed something in the region of about 9,000 extra, so. If I can get this, clean, this side cleaned up on 4,000 or less, I'll be laughing. Put another half a thou on it. So with a bit of backlash I had on it, I should say we're into about thou and a thou and three quarters, something like that. Not a lot. <coughs> kind of shows up how good or bad your milling is when you've got multiple items like this. And it is always uh, best practice I find for me anyway is to stone the, the bottom of that that sat on the uh, magnet. I stoned them all off really well so there was no burrs or anything. You only need one burr and all of a sudden you've got one that's really high and you don't understand why. Bit of grit, anything. That's another half thou, so we're into a near, well, just over two thou now. And apart from that one at that end, we're just about there, I think. Quite an accurate machine this, considering how old it is, and that it's covered in shite from head to toe, <laughs> and it's not even bolted down, it's not even sat on a level floor. About two and a half thou down now, so, and that appears to be cleaning the last bit up. That's another half thou on there. So I think if it gets these little marks out there off that one, I'll just put a couple of tents on it and let it go back and just clean up. Spark out type thing. And it's just coming up to those marks now, so. Looks 
what we want of it. Yeah, that's got them all. I'll send it back the same way, just put a couple of tents on it, just let it clean it up, you know, take any uh, little high spots up, and then we'll flip it over. Right. We need about seven thou of it. Some really good finish what we've got there. A few chatter marks in it, but. on it. But what I might do is go down to about six thou on the dial then take it off, do a quick measure, put it back on. Interested to see how much it takes to clean this side. Now we know we've got no backlash anywhere, so. The wheel I'm using is a 36K, if anybody's interested. I did dress it before I started. That deviation you see there in the middle where it hasn't quite cleaned that one up. This will be all down to how you tap them down in the vice. From what I've found in the past anyway. You've only got to be a little bit out. But the grind just shows it up really, really well. Right, that's another foul back the other way. Just touching that other one in the middle. So leaving nine thou or 0.25 of a mil oversized for the grinding. It's not actually turned out too bad really. I suppose the better you are on the milling machine, the more accurate you are. The less you'd have to worry about how much to leave, wouldn't you? That's just about got it all there at two thousand. So. so I suppose, considering the six pieces there, yeah, I'm quite happy at that. Not bad for a plumber. <laughs> Although this particular steel, it doesn't uh, it doesn't grind very well in the sense of it doesn't leave a particularly good finish. There's a few chat, quite a lot of chatter marks in there. That'll be three foul. We need <coughs> uh, 
one point nine foul off it. That's a foul. So a foul and nine tenths. <coughs> what I found is uh, if I run the traverse a little bit faster like I did on the other side, it leaves me a better finish. Uh, I don't get the chatter marks in it. So we'll do a foul, then we'll do uh, about seven tenths, and then we'll just do a couple of tenths clean up, and then we'll have a measure and see uh, see how well we did. And I've just got to sort of line them up a little bit and uh, just grind one more side, so we've got three ground surfaces. And obviously, one end's going to have. Uh, radius put on it in it. This will be the seven tenths. Last two tenths. I'm just going to run it back now on the same setting. I would say that's half a hundredths at that end. Get my big hand there. 35 mil. Showing that out. So. Yeah, if there was smack on. I'm really pleased with that. It's uh just goes to show how, uh, even though she's an old machine, she's uh, she's very accurate. Most me, uh, well, when I say she's very accurate, she's as accurate as I need it to be. Anyway, <laughs> get all this crap off of it. That's all I want to do now is drop that on there, take that off. facing that way now. It's not looking 
too bad. Flip it over, bend that down a bit. Uh, oops. And then I think all I'll do <coughs> is tap these down a little bit. And then <coughs> we'll just clean up this one side. Let it go in. So we'll just start to touch. Any second now, he says. Touch in there, put the thou on it, grease the traverse a little bit, and I'll get this side cleaned up. And I should say that'll do for this video, chaps. So, next time, uh, I think what we'll be doing is we'll be drilling and tapping these and drilling and reaming the hole for the uh, dowel pin for the hinges. I've still got two other ones to make that are going to go on the very end. Uh, they're going to be uh, slightly thicker than these. And yeah, that's about where we're going to go. Uh, the, the, the angle plate itself, with it having the two big uh, plates, I've been thinking about it a little bit and I'm thinking on one side I'm going to drill lots and lots of holes in like a, a, a pattern like what they have on the, uh, if you watch Tom Lipton you'll have seen his mini pallet thing. So I think I might make one side of the angle plate like that and then the other side will be a bit more of a custom affair uh, for bolting down my wood chipper blades. But I want to drill all the holes in it before I put the plates on here to, uh, to grind them. I have a feeling they'll move a little bit. So. Anyway, I will do so. I'll see you next time, boys and girls.